Does he have a printed award on the table? That's a good question. I told him the time. Do you have the June 12th agenda on the table? I'm June 5th agenda. What? There's some on June 5th. Yeah. But then I've got packets. Yeah. I've got an actual packet. Or June 12th. For us? Mm-hmm. Copy of the last week. Man, what that? Huh? You want it? Just a copy of the last week. It's a continuation of the last week. I mean, it's just to weeks. Oh, okay. in case somebody well, didn't count there, there so if anybody doesn't yeah, they're the same. Thing, just in case you guys forgot. Want the agenda or the packet? I just need the agenda. Uh, yeah. I'll grab the agenda would be good. I need packets. Good job. <laughs> there we go. I don't know what you did. I was going to do 
Like both wants one. Okay, I need to go grab more than it. <laughs> continuation from the meeting of June the 5th. If you would all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Brenda, would you give us a roll call for attendance? Atkins? Here. Powell? Here. Johnson? Here. Jones? Here. Long? Here. Pearson? Here. Hartman? Here. Thank you. We're all present. First thing on the agenda this evening is to uh, elect a vice chairman. And uh, at this point, it's open to the board for discussion and then a motion. Now I'll make a motion to elect Bill Johnson. I decline. <laughs> I decline that, but I will make a motion. I decline that, but I make a motion that we do Randy. Yeah, Brad. Randy. Okay. I'm going to decline that, and I'm going to make a motion that uh, I want to nominate Lois. I believe the experience that Lois has on the BZA would make her the most qualified person for that position. I'll oh, second that. We have a motion and a second. If there are no more motions, we'll consider motions closed. Is there any further discussion by the board? I do have one question before we vote. Is John from Jonesboro? Yes. You're Jonesboro, your replacement for Rex? Yes. Okay. Uh, we think we can introduce the John. I think that this is Yeah, I believe we introduced John. For everybody? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Brenda, would you give us a roll call for the vote? Atkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. 
Thank you. You're the new vice chair. Thank you for coming. Lucky girl. Not ready. Now we have a we have a continuation of petition four dot two dot one docket o three sp dash twenty three. We had completed the public hearing portion of the meeting and. We had closed that public hearing, and there was uh, one registered complaint that uh, they felt they did not have enough time on the opposition. And I reviewed the film, and I noticed that uh, I had made a slight error in that we had had opposition discussion and the three people came to the podium and spoke for the opposition and then we answered a question as was brought up by the one man who spoke and asked about Dollar General and then after we answered the question I did not ask if there was anyone else who wanted to speak in opposition. So I posed that question to our attorney if we've had a slight error in the meeting, and he said, I'll get back to you, which he did, and he said, uh, what you can do, since they did not use all their time, you can award them some additional time for a summary where they can state in a few minutes what they would like to say, uh, and to be fair, give the uh, people in favor of the petition, the same amount of time to do likewise. And so at this time, we're going to take uh, any additional statements from people in opposition. And you can have three minutes if you would like to approach the podium and uh, give us uh, any additional points that you wanted to make. Oh, and one other thing. Um, we need to, uh, if you all approve, we need to suspend the rules because our rules are the normal public hearing. So I ask a motion and a vote on that. I'll second. Would you give us a roll call, Brenda? Atkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. If you would, give us your name and you may begin. My name is Don Sutton. In March, I noticed a building permit issued to the Kingdom Event Center taped to the door on the building in question. So I inquired at the area plan office if it was zoned for an event center and they admitted that it would need a zoning exemption. I questioned why was a permit issued. I was told they can work on it, but they can't open it until they change the zoning. I attended the April Board of Zoning Appeals meeting and expressed my concern. I conferred with the neighboring property owners and created an objection letter which was signed by 11 neighbors. And I received a notification letter from area plan of a meeting for the BZA for May 1st. Two days before the meeting, I received a phone call from the area plan secretary telling me that the May 1st meeting was canceled. Next meeting to be June 5th. I attended the June 5th meeting at which a vote was called for to approve the minutes of the May 1st meeting. Three members of the board abstained from the vote. At the June 5th meeting, the director of area plan office stated that when our opposition letter was received, he called Mr. Young and said, we have to talk. There is no winner here. We are all losers.
Okay. Would the uh, petitioner also, or anyone in favor of the petition, like to make a statement for three minutes or less? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we both laid out a case that's, um, I think we both spoke our piece, uh, and to our neighbors, you know, I, I again apologize for uh, the mistake we've made on our part. And after this is done, would love to communicate about how we can try to help take care of some of the concerns that you have. Um, the only thing I would say is, and uh, you know, I want to restate the building was it's a commercial building. It was built for commercial purposes. It's been a commercial building since the day that it was built. Um, you know, the building could be used for a lot of different purposes. You know, and uh, if it's not approved for what it's been designed to be used, it's going to be used in another way. The building's not going to sit empty. We're going to use it, and so uh, I think it's a matter of is it beneficial as an event center to the community. Um, we're more than happy to work through, you know, concerns with neighbors uh, and, and be a good neighbor. Um, you know, but I I think that when we look at just the use case of the building, I believe that the design that we've come up with fits it, and uh, we hope that the previous. Uh, use since 1999 would be considered um, because we believe that we're aligned with uh, the type of use that it's been since the day it was built. Thank you. I need to state my name because I didn't talk last time. Am I allowed? You have a little bit less than a minute left. All I'm going to say is the concern with neighbors. Well, I'm a neighbor, three rows of neighbors were here last week that are in favor. And we're the ones on the property. And like we see, we're part of the same property. We see it, we're there. So it's not just neighbors. We, we want to get along with all our neighbors, but there were three rows of neighbors last week. I didn't know if everybody realized those were all neighbors that live there. We're okay with it. Okay. All right, then. Um, we are where we left off. The public hearing is closed and it's discussion for the board and the board may ask questions of the petitioner or the opposition during this period of discussion. Yes. You were saying you'd stop at 1030? That Yes, so you would fine the people so five hundred dollars. The beginning of shutdown starts at ten. It's it, I'm sorry. Uh, so in our contract, which we're happy to provide to you, uh, contractually, the the shutdown and teardown has to begin no later than ten thirty. They must contractually be out of the building by eleven, and there is a fine for them being in the building past 11 o'clock. And so that's the latest, which I believe, if I remember right, uh, aligns with the noise ordinance also that's already in place lawfully, which, of course, we're, we're, we're the plan is to comply. On top of, we have full-time staff that must remain on the property the entire time that anybody who rents the building is there. So it's, it's being monitored, and it's by people who actually live in our community. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but we want to know about the volume too on that. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So our everything that our contract states is they'll have to comply with all noise ordinances. So the this building could not be any louder than my house or any neighboring homes, and so it has to be at noise ordinance or below. And you're saying, and you're saying what in Grant County? What's the noise level out of the country? I mean, that, that's where I don't. If you're, if you're in town, that makes a whole bunch of difference than you're in a county with a lot of trees around. So, 
And I, I do have one question for Mr. Sutton there. Which house is yours? I'm immediately across the road from Is that west? I mean, is that west or is that east? East. East, east across 350 East. So you're behind the trees. Yeah. You got trees in between you. Well, now, now I'm asking questions here. You're on the other side of the trees. Yeah. And these people over here are not complaining. And you're, there's a row of trees. I mean, it's at least 40 or 50 feet deep. And you're worried about the noise getting through the trees? I don't know. That don't sound too good. Go in favor of it then. Say what? I don't know what he said. Can I? Was there enough time for me to talk in the beginning? Don talked, but I didn't. Well, I'm still asking questions. Yeah. So, do you agree that you've got 40 or 50 feet of trees in between your house and that building? Yes. Okay. So, I'm... okay. Is there further discussion by the board? Do, Bill, do you want me to go over the noise ordinance again? The ordinance we have uh, in place. You can read the noise ordinance. Okay. Uh, Bill, you had a question as far as in town or in the yeah. county. So, county, your your uh, sound level limits. No person or landowner shall permit any noise to be generated or produced on his or her property which exceeds 75 decibels for more than two minutes per hour measured at a point no closer than one half mile from the boundary of the property line from which the sound is generated unless specific, specific approval is obtained from area plan or the appropriate municipality of such noise and the hours for the noise uh, it shall be unlawful for any person or landowner to generate or permit uh, the generation of sound from his or her property through electronic amplification at a level above 25 decibels above the ambient noise level for more than two minutes per hour at the property line of the landowner where the sound is generated between the following hours. Uh, daily from Sunday evening through Friday morning is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then daily from Friday evening till Sunday morning is 11.30 p.m. to 9 a.m. But again, you're going to be inside, right? You're not. You're yes, not sir. outside. Yes, sir. It's an indoor venue. Yes, sir. Okay. There is an outside venue. Yes, yes sir. There is. We do have a courtyard where ceremonies will take place, but it will not be reception. It will not be um, dance hall. It's not. Um, it would be uh, the bride walking down the main sidewalk to the pergola. Um, and then after that, everything, any anything that would be amplified would be 100% indoors. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. My issue doesn't happen. <coughs> My issue is this: from the very beginning, they didn't have permission to have this event center. It went from one thing to something else. So what was it when they first started? What? Just a, what was it going to be? We, we the first right. permit was for storage. Yeah. Was, well, it was for storage space. Okay. Now, how do we get from that to the event center? So we've never had an event there. You need to come to the podium. Sorry. We've never had an event there. It's, it's only been a building under construction. So the, the intended use is, is an event center. Uh, it sounds like when the general contractor pulled the permit, he, he pulled the permit for a specific space that, that he was renovating. There's been stages of the renovation, and it, it has to do with budget limitations. So there's been different phases that they've done throughout. But yeah, we've never used the building. And it's been a school. Yeah, it's been, it's been a school since 1999, so it's been... You know, public commercial use since 99. Yeah. Yeah. 
I want to echo Lois's concern. It, it disappoints me and confuses me how we've got to this point without following proper permit procedures. Somewhere down the line, when it's filed as an event center for a storage remodel, you know, that was a clear indication of what your intentions were. Would you agree with that? Could, could you ask the question? I'm sorry. When, when you filed the permit for a remodel of storage and it was filed under an event center title, that was a clear indication that that was your intent to use the facility for an event center. Is that uh, correct? We didn't file for the permit. The general contractor did. So um, initial permit. Initial permit was through Cape Man Construction for a remodel. Oh, it, it did not state where the location was as an event center. It was. It was a remodel. Uh, again, pulled by Cape Man Construction. Okay. okay. And he argued the person of owner of the property when you make sure that the general contractor has all this information before he starts well, you know, a lot of times contractors come in and get permits for roofs and everything else that's you know. fine but you, you know it's his duty to make sure that he's got the right permits to get started and then you said you had issues with checking being able to check the building as far as you know, different phases we, we did a, a the initial initial inspection and then he called for a rough ends before he covered everything. Mm -hmm. Aaron went back in November. Uh, you know, as far as as far as Aaron going back, Aaron went back, he, he did the rough end inspection, okayed it and moved on. Was that for the first permit for the storage? Right. But he went back and then what happened inspection. after that? It wasn't it wasn't seen until I believe the sentence came in. I beg your pardon? It wasn't seen again until the sentence came in. So we were waiting on a call for a final, which which is... Uh, we for did the storage? For the permit, right. So that's what we were waiting on. Uh, when we got there, obviously, a fence had been put up, a sign had been put up. Ryan, is, is there ever a past case of there being a fine or some sort of penalty associated with improper filing and following of permits I would well I would say no uh, again part, part of our existence you know prior to when I became building inspector my father was here uh, you know he, he spent most of the year doing inspections I spent half the year coming in trying to get him caught up from things we hadn't seen in a year. Then he'd come back for summer, do summer inspections, and then I would come in and try to catch him back up within. I tried to make sure that everything was touched uh, between three and six months out. So he knew when he came back, there was nothing out there that was older than three to six months that we hadn't seen yet. It's what Grant County has done for. We, when, we've, when we've got 800 permits out there that we, we haven't seen in over six months. So I'm assuming this is probably not the first time this has happened? No. And, and what would be the protocol of, of past practice when this occurs? Well, the, the fines would come in if the, if the permits expire. They, they turn over to code enforcement. Uh, it, a lot of times we try to get in. We leave friendly reminders trying to get people to call us. Uh, we try to get in, we try to see what we can see, short of, you know, tearing walls out. And so there have been fines applied in the past? If, if it ends up in court. If it ends up in court. Oh. And that's, you know, uh, again, this is something we, we went forever trying to get a full-time building inspector. Uh, you know, we finally got a full-time building inspector, got halfway caught up. It's just what we've always done. I mean, I, I would come, I would come in in November. Say, I come in in November 2022. I would start because our permits are good for two years. I would start on permits two years old, getting ready to expire, and, and try to touch everything back up to three to six months. Okay. And I did that for six years. And I don't know if it's going to do us any good to point fingers as to who you know where the ball was dropped here. Right. I don't know if that's going to get us anywhere. Um, and you had mentioned that. 
this board has the ability to put conditions upon this approval? That's correct. Okay. I do have concerns in regard to um, alcohol or, or liquor on, on the premise. I, I know that you folks stated that you don't have an alcohol permit. You don't intend to acquire one in order for alcohol to be served. But where is your position in regard to um, the a client bringing or... Um, right now in our contract, we are, um, and we've been in contact through Liz Wright with the state, um, and we're allowing them to apply for not a liquor license, a beer and wine license permit for one day. Um, so it would be a single day uh, beer and wine. They would have to have, again, we're not providing, we're not um, storing, we're not anything. They would have to have a licensed distributor, a licensed bartender, and they would have to have that permit displayed um, during, actually, we're requiring it, I believe, two days before the event, because we want to make sure that they've taken every step. So in our contract, we're asking them to give us at least two days ahead of time to know that they did the proper steps, they went through the state, they have the permit, and it must be displayed during their event, but it is only beer and wine. We will not allow um, hard liquor to be served. With, with your spiritual background, how do you justify that? So for me, me personally, um, most people thought we would carry um, a liquor license. We is a venue. Myself being a pastor, um, actually heavily involved in the recovery community. Um, I don't know that I can put my convictions on everyone that's going to use the event center. So the way I, the way I viewed it was if, if we don't store it, I'm not going to provide, if you came to my house, I'm not, there's nothing in my home for me to provide for you. Um, there are people that choose to drink beer and wine. Um, I don't I'm know. one of them. And, 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 that's, and that's your belief, that's, and that's phenomenal. Um, I don't know that it's fair for me to put my belief system on you if you wanted to rent my building. So I look at you're renting my building. Um, you're renting our, our, our building and we are going to have on staff people there. Um, I don't know that I, I felt it was correct to put um, my belief system on everyone that will step into the building. That's how I did it. So the way, the way I guess I eased my conscience was the fact that we're not providing. We, I would never provide alcohol for any of my friends. Um, I personally believe that nothing good comes from alcohol. I've seen it destroy a lot of people. I've never seen it help anyone. Um, and so me personally, that's my stance. But if you were to rent our facility, I don't know that it's fair for me to be like, look, this is how I feel about it. I think you should feel the same way. So how do you handle, what, where would your liability stance be in regard to excessive drinking? So in, in my conversation with the state, um, I asked that question, and that is the purpose of having a licensed bartender slash distributor. It is their job as a, a part of their license to know when to uh, cut someone off, um, to make the assessment that someone has had too much. Um, the, other, the other reason why we chose to only allow beer and wine um, is it does take quite a bit more um, consumption uh, to get to a dangerous level. Um, okay. and, but we also trust, uh, we have to trust, I'm not a licensed bartender. Uh, honestly, I've never, outside of Charlie Brown sewer service, unclogging drains, I've never been in a bar in my life. Uh, and and um, so um, I can only speak so much to that. But I mean, that was our, what I was told by the state was that that is part of their licensing is for them to recognize and, and be able to, to see those types of situations. Mm -hmm. But I do cover that. Yes, ma'am. Do you have an insurance that covers? Yeah, can I? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to answer that. Yeah, so, um, so a few things. Yes, ma'am, we do. The general liability policy on the, the building is for general liability. I believe that policy is a million dollars. I know it's at least a million. I believe we added an umbrella for a few million on top of that. 
we're serious enough about this matter also that a page and a half of our contract has to do with alcohol use, how it can and cannot be used, all the way down to our staff can cut people off, call the police, and kick people out of the building um, if we feel like that it's needed. Uh, so we take it seriously, and uh, for both of us, we don't want our, our livelihood, our names to be jeopardized, and again, my children sleep next door to this building, so we, we take it very serious also. It's, it's something that we, we feel like in moderation, it can be enjoyed and it's okay. Beyond moderation, it, we're not gonna tolerate it. Uh, my visit to your this proposed facility, you said there was 150 parking spots there. It appears that most of that's under gravel at this time. Yes, sir. Is there an attempt to pave that at some point? Yeah, if profits allowed for it, it'd be great. Yeah, I mean, at the at the time we've we've tapped, we've done everything we can do. It's a little difficult to organize parking on film without lights. Yeah, so we have to have we have to have uh, we have a parking crew of two to three people that will be okay. parking people. And, and we did discuss the requirements for the handicap parking, what was required for that too. So that was my big as as far as that needing to be met. Because they just because they had the gravel there and the gravel on the other side too. Okay. I think I'm done. Okay. Um, we just interviewed a new attorney. His name's David Glickfield. And during that process, he was asked about why zoning. Why do we have zoning? And he said zoning laws to protect people's rights to have their property and not have infringements on it as far as somebody building a house right up on their property line or running a business next door people invest money in their house if they're in a residential area they expect certain protections from the law on what happens in the properties around them and i believe that's what zoning is for uh, we felt that was a good explanation given to him, so something to consider. Um, I know we also did talk about uh, no alcohol at these events. Um, it was mentioned in testimony the first time that it would not be served. And that kind of left a question with some of us, would there be alcohol there at all? And uh, though maybe some of you weren't at the meeting, an APC meeting approximately a year ago was uh, for a small rezone on a farm so that they could do events and run a store, which would also sell crafts and, and meat items because it was a cattle farm. Uh, in that discussion of what could be sold, the APC placed a limit on no alcohol. So that, you know, that can be a part of the condition. They made that condition. Um, also, uh, music inside the building will not be as loud outside the building. I think we all can understand that. Uh, Loud noise will go right through a woods as well. So, especially when the leaves are not on. But those are things to consider. Uh, there was also, in testimony, a discussion about the six bright lights and the effect for the gentleman brought up who lived across the road. Uh, if, if this was to be approved, can there be a a term, so to speak, um, that can be placed it just in order to get a, a feel for how it's actually going in regard to the concerns that have been noted. That makes sense. That's an interesting point. Um, in the past, when we felt there was some businesses that were starting up and we were giving them a special exception on it, we felt that this business might really 
outgrow the neighborhood, so to speak, as far as traffic, parking, square footage of the lot was on, and we asked them to come back in five years to be reapproved. Uh, so things, a condition like that can be written in when the motion is passed, and it can be a condition of approval. So. So it's residential suburban. It is RS, residential RS. suburban. Suburban. Requires a special exception. Um, there are not a whole lot of businesses that can go in residential suburban. And there are quite a few, I guess, if you go through each one. Um, of what fits the building, what fits the neighborhood. I guess that's the question that's really before the board. And as Mr. Young said, and, and it does make sense, this building could be used for other things. And it will be used for something. The question before the board is, is this the right use? And do you approve it? And if you want to discuss conditions, we can discuss conditions this time but we do have state limits and laws there are we limits already, we already went through that yes there are limits you know 75 decibels that's you know that's not real low that's like a, uh, a vacuum cleaner standing next to that um, According to the Environmental Protection Agency, they recommend that you limit exposure to noise levels above 70 decibels. This is the recommended exposure level over a 24 hour period. That level and below would allow you to prevent hearing loss. Um, now, the question is at what point does that harm your uh, property? If, it's, uh, if that's allowed. No, well, that's 75 decibels for no more than two minutes per hour. Yeah, right. So that's the max. So it's not 60 minutes of. Yeah. And so if the range goes, here, let me pass this out to you guys. So you're saying it can only reach that peak for two minutes in an hour? And there's an hour, now we've got 75 decibels for two minutes. Each one is one that you can write. So do you have venues booked for this facility now? Do you need those? Yes. yes, we have. We, uh, we actually had one that we had canceled. So we, we did that to comply and honor the proceeding that we have. Oh, right how far are you booked out? We've only got a few for the year. You intend to use it through the winter also? Uh, ideally. I mean, I, I think it'd be limited use because of the, I, you know, my experience is most weddings are spring, summer, fall. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we, we would like to use it. Let's just get it here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for clarification, it's not just a wedding venue. So, for example, say the, the realtor's monthly meeting could easily be held here. Um, you know, it could be a, a, a quinceanera, it could be a family reunion. Uh, it could really, you know, we, we've had a couple of graduation parties for our family, you know, uh, that were just private, you know, get-togethers. Um, they weren't paid events, but it's, you know, it's not just, it's a wedding venue, it's really a venue place. Um, so, so we would hopefully we would have some stuff throughout the winter. I guess I shouldn't say it, but I, I'm going to. We've had, we've been here, Lois, we've been here 15 years, and how many times have we 
had to say, okay, you did it already, you mm -hmm. gotta okay it. Mm -hmm. That's how many times? I mean, yes. you can think of the city I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, right? You can, so, they really made a mistake, but they got a lot invested. I say we take, uh, take a nomination and get it over with. But I think it's, it's a good deal for us. I don't see it hurting anybody. I, I just, we got the laws already on the books. We don't have to invent any more. But the idea of just taking, uh, let these people do what they want to do as, without the permits, uh, just let them have free reign of this. This is what bothers me, the fact that you're not, the permits on time when you need them, and the fact that there were no notifications let these people know. You also got to think about the neighbors. They too have a right for quietness. They pay for this, they pay taxes to this community. So let's not just look at what they want. Well, it's going to be what we want and yeah. decide. Yeah. It's not going to be what I want, yeah. what you want. Yeah. We're I mean, going to decide here. Yeah. There's got to be limits on it. Yeah. I say we can put stipulations on a spatial exception. Yeah. Not a problem with me. But I just, I just think we're going to go around and around and around because I can name five right off the top, back of my head, the people already did it and we had to approve it. So that's not a big deal here. They don't, and there's a law against that. And that's what we need to stop that. How do you stop it? We don't have enough people. Ryan's already said he hasn't got enough people. So how do you stop it? You don't have enough people and we got. 40,000 people here wanting to do something. So I just to disqualify it because they went ahead and spent a half million dollars makes no sense to me. Would you uh, consider a time limit just to come back for a review or just? Well, we, we've done that. We've done that too, but I, we're, I'm not sure if he ever went back and got five years even though we put it down there they don't have time first time so, i've ever heard of it yeah we've, we've done it yeah we put yeah, we, uh, we put it on the house trailers and that yeah but I, I guess if there were complaints out there by the neighbors they would sure let us know oh right. yeah. yeah i'm positive of that yeah i i just to add i i have walked the building as far as the final goes uh the building itself looks great uh just a small list of uh, some under under sink protections, scrap bars in a couple of bathrooms. Uh, as far as their fire suppression and and uh, smoke detectors and all of that looks great. Uh, so they just they've got a couple of things to correct, and we'll be ready for a certificate of occupancy on the building side. Of it. So that you guys are aware. I think we have to also remember. We're not required to approve it just because somebody went ahead. I understand that. We have been rather generous on that in the past. I'll admit, be the first to admit that. Um, it comes to mind a case where someone was going ahead and doing a garage, repairing trucks, and then they wanted to build onto the building. It was the first that we were alerted to that there was a business there that had been operating for years <laughs> but uh, okay um, we are not required to approve it it can be used for something else the money is not lost it's in that asset and that is a fine asset the question is do we approve it do we approve it with conditions or do we reject it? And we have to consider that the people who are here did nothing wrong. Do we penalize them with a reduced property value? Because some people may not want to live across the street from an event center, not knowing how it will be run. Be quiet or not. So these these are things you have to weigh in this decision. Uh, 
Ready for a motion? I'm ready. If you want to discuss decibel levels or no alcohol or putting it in there when it actually closes, any other conditions you want to add, now is the time if that's the route you want to go. I'm in support of tying a time limit for review or whatever the proper terminology is, whether that be a year, two years, three years, whatever that is. They may come back for review. Yeah, is that what you're saying? They may choose to change it within that period of time. Who knows, but don't fly. The board may have to track that. Just considering. I know I've been here about five years. I know that we put some conditions on a little more than four years ago on a couple of properties. Um, we would have to look back and find those if we wanted to review. But, but some of those are based on if the property owner grew the business. She changed hands. Well, if you change that, then it's out. That, then it's out. Right. Okay. What about the alcohol? What about the alcohol use? Don't be concerned about that. Even though they saying that they're not going to provide it, and whoever's there, they'll have their bartender or whoever. When you leave there, beer, wine, I guess it affected as far as an accident as hard liquor. If you've had enough of it. And the uh, <clears throat> level that the state uses to arrest for drunken driving is pretty low. Yeah. Well, sadly enough, without having some form of liquor, it'll, it'll kill at least 50% of the business that I have, if not more. That's the reality. That, that's the reality. I, could, I understand that. Well, I could bring a cooler in and sell it out of a car. <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah, that's, if you made that stipulation, that's something they would have to watch for. Because people there get leaving there and getting in accidents are what we are trying to prevent. Well, I believe the time period will give us the opportunity to review that how it goes if we if we choose to do that. Lois, are you saying no alcohol? Well, I'm not, um, Randy. With, with that review, we'll let them uh, have a bartender or whatever, but then we'll watch, uh, monitor that in say what a year or so and see how it's going and then if they've had a good you know record of not having people drunk or turn in somebody's yard or whatever then you know it's it's, it's okay but if it's not and the review, review comes back that you know this that place has just really went from you know good to terrible then there's something to be said about that so you know, and like I said, like you said, it's part of the venue because most of the people, that's how they're going to make their money. So we got to look into that too. Yeah. That, We're that, not getting any, we won't that, make any that. money from the alcohol sales. Okay. Not not you, but the people that come to the venue. And they're expecting to be able to sit and socialize and, you know, that way, but not be, you know, terribly out outrageous. So I think, you know, the alcohol would be okay, but like you said, we would keep monitoring, keep it monitored. So within a year, we can say, you know, this, you know, this has been a good year. Or did we make a mistake and say, you know, this was okay to do that? We want to give them a chance because they are a business. Yeah. But wouldn't the state follow that? If they're given a permit, 
permit for two days or one day, would the state follow that too? Or are they too busy to follow? If they're selling beer and wine, then the state give them the license and they do the law and they don't hear nothing, they're not going to check on them. But if they hear something going on, when the state check them, they're the ones that issued the license for two days. The state will check if they're, if they're in violation of any law. As far well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The state yeah. would know yeah, right away. The state's not going to come in just because these guys are got alcohol there or whatever. They'll they'll come in if it's a serious, you know, really serious where they've had uh, people selling alcohol to kids and you know when they put them, you know, uh, some person selling alcohol without a license. But they're not going to make a dime. They say. It. Yeah. Right. right. Is that right? You're not making a dime yeah. off of. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Right. So, but they're res they're going to be responsible for the people that attend there. Yeah, I, under and I and understand, but we got a state law yeah. about uh, mm -hmm. helping too. Okay, that's what I'm saying too. Yeah. It's not just them. Yeah. Because if, if they're not making a dime off of it, I don't think I'd do it. But <laughs> right. If I'm going for profit, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't. But it's going to open the door for them to be able to lease the facility. That's, I understand. I understand yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Your, your insurance carrier your insurance carrier would have something to say about abuse of alcohol absolutely and uh, they can shut you down just as easily as as we as you coming back to us they, they could easily non-renew us I mean for me uh, I'm with you all in that uh, uh, abuse of alcohol is a huge liability and so that's why like, we have full-time monitors and we have so much dialogue in our contract about it we, it has to be closely monitored and so I mean I I'm personally not gonna lose my livelihood over somebody acting stupid yeah you know so uh, I'm next door Pastor Todd's next door and we have we have full-time staff on site to monitor that and and, and as long with the state and the licensed bartender so, so yeah you, you there's would have excise monitoring the liquor in that way you'd also have local health department monitoring any any food catering that they're bringing in uh, they're not going to provide food either so i mean that, that would be end up being a permit through local that would be catered in yeah right so Just, so dean would be there also and it's going to spur the local economy in that way also too. <laughs> Any more questions? for a motion? We got the one on the floor. Do we have a motion? Randy said, Randy said so. Anyone check it? Make a motion that um, we approve with a reasonable timeline, whatever you folks want to support as far as a review. Two years? What I wrote down here. Okay. Make a motion that we approve with um, with a two-year. What would we call that? Review. 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 I'd second that motion. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Atkins <clears throat> and a second by Mr. Howe. Okay, and that is with a time review of two years. Shouldn't we put, if it changes hands, this special section goes away? All bets are off then anyway. Yeah. That is, yeah. uh, Can we do that? That is that's not. That's 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 not that's right. Right. Who enforces that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Who, who would enforce that, Ryan? In any event that they would sell them, the, the people would come in with the understanding that they can pick right up with it and run. Mm -mm. And, you know, like, again, it's happened out there where we've, we've walked in and who are you guys? <laughs> Terry Plant would be, I, think that's in the, I mean, uh, that would be, they gave me six more employees. Like, in that in, yeah. It's in somewhere in the... But Area yeah, Plant, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a new... 
if it's a new by it all it would drop it's it would be us having to, then they have to reapply for it yeah so you, you may have an assessor's office well yeah there would be licensing and stuff that would have to be applied for that should raise that flag. because this is already a type of an event center and so for you to go ahead you've got to reapply for for what's going on okay, so if someone else came in uh, I'm trying to think of what, what would trigger red flags, but I mean, assessor's office, sign changes, I mean, there should be something out there that lets us know. Yeah, health department. Mm -hmm. It is something that we would have to notice. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, things have happened like uh, meat market in Fairmount <laughs> changed hands and uh, kind of went under the radar for a very short period of time. Right. I know we got a motion in a second. If in the event that this didn't work for these folks and they chose to use that facility for another usage, would they be back in here? Is this approval only apply to the requested use of the property yes. now? Yes. So if they if they pick something else, if they pick something that was allowed by right, they wouldn't have to come back in. But if they if they chose to do something that was again allowed by special exception. They would have to come in for the new, a new special exception. I brought that question up for you guys. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, we have a motion, Brenda. Would you give us a roll call? Adkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? No. Long? I got one thing to say. Negligence on your part doesn't make it an emergency for us. Right. And you being a contractor yourself, you should have known this. Now I've got to say no. Pearson? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. We will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is 7.1.2. Docket 02 BCA B 23 public hearing. Uh, and this is for the sign at the event center. And we uh, are applying to allow a 32 square foot sign instead of a 25 foot square foot sign and to be 15 feet in height instead of the required 5 feet. And you have a picture of the sign and uh, okay uh, Mr. Young, do you have anything to add to this request for the sign if you would please come to the podium and give us your uh, reason for this sign and the yes, size sir. of it Sure. Uh, a few things. The, as we discussed, there's a berm and it's heavily wooded uh, down the road and it's quite difficult to see. We actually have requested from the neighbor to be able to, at our expense, even trim back some trees and bushes from the road because as you're passing through, if you're not looking for the sign, you can't see it. Um, so that was one of the reasons that we felt elevating it slightly and a slight increase in size would be helpful so people could notice it and, and not pass it. Um, down that road, it's, it is 100% just tree and bush cover, um, and we're limited just due to the, the neighbor to the south of us not allowing um, you know, for us to trim. Uh, in addition, there's other signs on the road within a, a few thousand feet that are substantially larger, so I don't think it's uh, completely unusual in that in that area. Does that answer your questions? Uh, yes, I did a, a drive by, but I really didn't get out and measure it. How high is the bottom of the sign from the ground? 
But the bottom's on eight foot? No. It's way shorter than that. The bottom of the sign. But you hit it actually directly under the... Yeah. So I would say the bottom of the sign is less than six feet high. And the top is... It's four foot tall. It's an eight by four sheet. Eight by four, so it's about ten foot post. Yeah, that's right. It was a 14 foot post, four foot in the ground. So I believe the top of the sign would be ten foot tall. Yeah. The, the person that took the picture, were they standing near the driveway or in the grass? Or Can or I see the, the reference? Yes. Can, yeah. we, we took pictures and put them with the permit and forgot to put them with the, the driveway. Yeah. That's the driveway? Yes, sir. We forgot to put them with the package when we put them with the permit. It kind of appears that you can see under it and down the road if you're in a regular car. If you're sitting up higher, maybe not. Did anyone actually pull up by the sign and see if it obstructs your view? I know it's kind of hard to see those, but I would, I would go along with the trees and the shrubs. Yeah, it depends on what direction yeah. you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. But is that going to be an LED sign? No, it, it looks uh, like it's not lit. It's not lit. It's a sheet of plywood with a, a laminate, a piece of aluminum laminate, and then like a vinyl cover on it. It's, she it's said not that there wasn't a lot of light on that road, so that's why I asked that question. It, that's true. What we talked about is that you put like a small solar light out there just to point at the sign, but right now there's no electric out there, so we're, we're pretty limited. <clears throat> So why would you want it 15 feet high instead of 10 feet high? It right. is 10 feet. It's 10 feet high. Yeah, but you're, you're asking for 15. Count. Yeah, if it is, that's a mistake. Yeah. But we're, our request is that it stays as is instead of us needing to reduce it. So we're, we're not asking for anything yeah, different than what's there. No, you're right. It's, it's, it's right. It's, right. it's, it's 15 feet high. So you're 10. You're after it, 10. Yes, yes sir. sir. It Just for it to stay as is. So it's... Yeah, it's probably a mathematical error or measuring error. Still the sign. I'd have to probably want to put 15 in there. Okay, I, I don't remember yeah, this thing. I think I should have decided it was like this. It's not 15. One of the reasons we elevated it as well is that's the main driveway we used to exit on 350. And we have a lot of females that live on our property. Um, and we wanted to make sure that they had clear uh, visual to their left oh, um, you in to pull out onto the road. <laughs> uh, my wife being one of them, uh, we just wanted to make sure they could see really, really clearly and have no obstruction. So that was one of the reasons why we went as, as high as we did on the side. Is, it, is there any rooms in the facility that you can stay overnight? Um, you may need to. <laughs> she, we, just, we just celebrated 24 years, so I don't, I don't know that I'm there yet. <laughs> So with the pass top of the sign. Can put the top of the sign. Yeah. About six, six, six foot underneath. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the one they're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Is this the gravel sign? Okay. Okay. You can easily want to change to. Is this the forever sign? I'm sorry. The forever sign you're trying to have, and not like, say in the future. Go to LED. Correct. Yes, it's a permanent sign. Yeah, I, I would say if we ever want anything different, we would obviously apply for a change. As of now, we have no intent of changing that sign. So we'd have to run power and get to it. Do anything other than a dark sign. Okay, but your power come out here. The LED comes into play, and they're going to light. And there's going to be people that are up the street that's not going to light. Right. Okay, um, no. is there any opposition to this petition for a sign exception? <clears throat> okay, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and we'll move to board discussion. Is there any board discussion of this proposal? If the sign was ever to be lit, Brian, would they be required to come back and get an approval for that? No. So they're talking about doing like a solar on there. Is that, I mean, with digital or or your uh, change, changeables and stuff like that? 
we'd have to look and see if it's even allowed in an RS. So I mean, some of it will depend. So would they be required to the existing physical size of this sign now, if they were to replace it? Let's say they want to replace the face of this sign. Would they be required to the dimensions of this sign that we're approving tonight, or not? They would not have to come back if they're not making it bigger. Okay. If we've already approved this size. Within this physical limits of yeah. size. If they, okay. if they decide to go digital, or then that would be we'd have to we'd have to get into the land use and see if if that type of sign is allowed in RS. Okay. I believe digital is allowed in RS, but it would come back here for a special exception. Okay. Don't contract for it until you come back. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other board discussion? Do we have a motion? I wouldn't make a motion that the sign be approved as established. The 10 foot? Yes. 10 foot, yeah. Change that. I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Howell made a motion to approve the sign. 10 foot and 32 square foot instead of 25. <coughs> Mr. Atkins seconded the motion. Uh, is there any further discussion of the motion? Okay, Brenda, would you give us a roll call? Atkins? Yes. Howell? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Mm, yes. Yeah. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Motion passed. You have your exception granted. Okay. And at this time, we'll move on to the next public hearing, which is 7.2.1, docket 03 BCA. B-23 names Troy Freeman at 607 Tippo Drive, Sweet Sir. Uh, would you take the stand, please? Thank you. And please sign in. If you would, tell us a little bit about your project you would like to propose. Yeah, good evening, members of the board. My name is Troy Freeman. I preside at 607 DeVoe Drive, Sweetser, Indiana. That is the property under consideration for this request. Um, 20 years ago, my wife and I purchased two lots, each with 100 foot of frontage to build our house. So we have a total of 200 feet. Um, so in order to build anything right now, you have to stay within 10% of your total frontage aside from your uh, property line. So that would put us at 20 feet. The rest of the homes in the area are all built on uh, single lots, which is 100 square foot or 100 foot of frontage. So the homes are currently built within 10 feet of the property line. So I would just like to come before the board and request a variance to be able to change from the 20 feet to the 10 feet consistent with the rest of the buildings in the, in the area. Okay. There's no opposition. Well, I thought I'd let him answer a question or two if he had one before I asked for opposition. Oh, okay. it's, it's my understanding that you have some sort of a homeowners group or some within the, the subdivision that you live. Is that correct? Correct. And can you share? Has, have you applied with those folks? I did. I, I supplied the required information on December 28th and delivered it to their office. Um, I have not received a response back. According to the covenants, they had 30 days in which to respond, and no response was approval to proceed. 
in a response from your immediate neighbors? Uh, actually, my next door neighbor on the side that I'm building is is fine with it. They both were great friends. They've been over and we've discussed it, and they're fine. We have a row of trees that we're going to continue to leave there. I will build on this side of the trees so that they probably won't even see the building once the, the trees are mature. And they were both aware of using this evening, and I actually invited them. Okay. Um, so what's the size of the building? Um, it's going to be 30 by 60. And your property runs along this way? It runs east-west. And you're going to do this? No, it'll be parallel with, with the property. So I have 200 foot of frontage, and then the building will set perpendicular to the road. You got 200? Okay. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the biggies of this to remember. Yeah. If he only owned one lot, he wouldn't need a variance because it'd only be 10 foot. But because he owns two lots, it's 200 foot, so he needs 20 instead of the 10. He'd have if he only owned one lot. That makes sense. And so it will be, be a full well, farm? Because he owns two, his percentage goes up. Yeah. And it, and but it's going to be a pole barn? Correct. Are the lots deeded separately? Um, if I recall correctly, 20 years ago, we had to come in and combine them because we built the house just about in the middle. And yeah. since we crossed the line, they had to be combined. So, so that would eliminate any separation of the house and the barn? Oh, correct. Yeah. There's... It won't be used for any other... Just no, it's just going to be for, for storage in a workshop area. Mm -hmm. It's going to be completely finished on the inside, heated. So. It's not for commercial use. It is not for commercial use, correct. <clears throat> Do you have to take out any trees at all? No, if I can scooch it over and get closer to the line, I will not be taking out any trees. And I looked at it and I thought, we got to move that tree. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's the reason he wants 10 foot, is yeah, to try okay. to save the sycamore. I understood. I, I didn't know how wide that was looking at it. You can kind of tell from my property I love trees. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Time for discussion amongst the board. Discussion. Would anyone like to make a motion? I make motion that we adopt O three B Z A B dash twenty three as it's written. I'll second. So we have a motion from Mr. Johnson and a second from Mrs. Jones. Do I have a roll call, please? Atkins. Yes. How? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Build your building. You have your exception, sir. Thank you. Or actually, it's a variance. <laughs> right. We really have exceptions oh, yeah. on the line here tonight. Okay, uh, 
Lord, it is 713. Uh, next item on the agenda. Uh, we have some, you know, housekeeping things, so to speak, to take care of. Have we done all the approval of minutes and findings of facts, which we have none? I have the approval of minutes checked off. Was that correct? I'm trying to think back to last week. You did the approval of the minutes. There were no findings no of findings, facts. Right, in fact, yeah. I, one of the reasons I, I skipped over things last week was that we had a full house and I knew we'd be lucky to get through the first one, which we couldn't get done, but uh, we tried. Anyway, um, the question to you is, do you want to spend more time and work on our rules of procedure? And uh, I'm more, do you want to adjourn? I'll, uh, I'll entertain the motion if you want to adjourn, which means we would not get back to it until August. Uh, or we could spend, I don't know, a half hour or so and uh, push through the rules. What, uh, what ones have you got? They're just the ones that. We are have here. made it through page 11 and are ready for page 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. I personally would vote for adjournment. I said so you probably don't have five, ten minutes, I would think. Maybe it wouldn't be that long. That I would vote for. Yeah, I mean, you, you got almost part of the Do you want to grind it? Finish it up? You're on the clock. It's <laughs> our clock. I'm this Okay, let's go. Okay. All right. All right. Page 12 here. Um, we really didn't have anything on here. I had it highlighted that application withdrawn by the applicant shall be placed, not be placed in the agenda for a consideration of six months after withdrawn. Okay. Um, that one. Then on 623, notification of conflict of interest. All right. Here is upon suspicion of any potential conflict of interest in any case to come before the board, the board member shall notify the chairperson, acting chairperson, or counsel of the situation. Upon suspicion of potential conflict by the chairperson, he, she shall notify the vice chairperson or counsel. And then on down here, we had the rules committee recommended to remove should any member be disqualified participating and voting on any application pursuant to IC 369409. An alternative may be placed by the appointing body to fill the duties of the disqualified members. The rules committee recommended approving that because we don't do it. At one point in time, it may have been three or four years ago, we talked about the alternate process. We discussed it really quite at length, um, and we decided not to have alternates because most of the time, you would need an alternate for every member. Most of the time, if they attended meetings, they would sit here and have nothing to do. Some of the time we have problems filling our own chairs with members, but most of the time we're a seven member board. We are a seven member board, and that's an exception in this state because of when we were established. They were seven member boards allowed. Current boards are five members. So we do have a little more people to carry forth with a meeting. Uh, if one or two are absent. And it's kind of hard to get a very qualified, trained member, and they have to come from the appointing authority, which there's several appointing authorities involved here. So 
the board at that time said no to alternate members. Didn't do anything about the rules. But anyway, so we're at a point of where, okay, there are rules we should make them follow how we proceed with things and not have rules that we don't follow. That was the recommendation from the committee. Did I leave anything out, Bob? No. Um, so. So we want to remove that section. Remove that paragraph there, should any member be disqualified. I got lost because he said we're on page 12 and then he started reading off page 13. Yeah. yeah. Well, he said 12. 7.2. Yeah, we already did 12. I mean, that was the first thing I talked about was 12. You got to be quick. Now we're on 13. Didn't click. It wasn't that much. <laughs> okay, so we are on 13. In red is what was proposed to be removed. Do you motion? Yes, if there's no further discussion. Nope. We'll look for a motion. Make a motion that that section be removed. Second. With alternate. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, for that page, Brenda, would you give us a roll call? Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, moving on to page 14. Okay. Presence to vote. No board member shall vote on any matter deciding an application or appeal requiring a public hearing except after attending the public hearing on the application or appeal. Add by being physically present or visibly present by via electronic participation. So we do have that option that's been created since these rules were written. So the recommendation from the committee was to add that line. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we'll check that one. I, I would ask your head as far as the electronic participation at meetings we have approved that but right now that's not in our zoning ordinance and we don't have it in here do we want to put it in our rules so that if something comes up it's in front of us that's in state code right yeah i don't think we have to have it everything in state code in our rules i think we can refer to it though uh if we want to refer to that with an ic c I see that I, that I, that. Okay. Well, I think we adopted it into the rules. I just we haven't it, officially put it, put it okay. in there. Where did we put that in? That's what I was thinking. It was it was right where you were talking about present. Uh, you were talking about the electronic yeah. presence. And it's basically you're allowed two meetings, the electronic participation, then you have to appear in person I know, right. I know. before you can no, participate we, in another you guys adopted it August 2nd, 2021. Right. And then there was the emergency order that allowed electronic participation, which went on right. for over a year, it seemed like. Unlimited. Okay, so anyway, electronic participation, I don't know. Um, now, but fall in the same year? Yes, that would. Uh, that's a, a kind of a rolling process. You have two meetings that you can be on there by electronic, and then you have to attend a meeting. Or you can listen, but you can't vote. Your vote doesn't yeah. count. Your vote doesn't You can't vote, right. Because uh, it's an open meeting, anybody can listen. And, uh, okay. Um, those are the those are the rules. It's also in the open door law, I think, as well. 
I don't have it right in front of me, then we could add it. But well, let's make it a separate, let's make it a separate paragraph because it is, you know, there's, it's a little bit lengthy, the explanation of it. Correct. But uh, let's mark it as uh, something to consider when we've got it in front of us. You happen to have it with you, you can read it. Yeah, it's uh, just over a page long. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I remember. I think. Yeah. That's, I, I think that's one of the reasons you know, that it's just state law and we would consider it, but not put it in our rules. Uh, anyway, do we have a, a motion? Our, we have a motion to step forward with this one. Now you're going to separate it? Yeah, I think we'll separate it. Yeah, we would have to one. put it in here as, you know, a separate, and since we don't have it in front of it, we'd have to look at it and decide that we want to do that. So I think at this point, we can go with what we have written here, and then we can talk about adding it next time or in a future meeting when we've got it in front of us. In, in front of us. In text. But this would work for now. I think this would work for now. And it is state code, so we will follow it. Should, should you cite the IC code? It's, it's just one of those that comes up when it's, when it's uh, were you here three meetings or two? What, what did it say? What did it, you know, it, it's one of those that comes up in a meeting where we're going, I don't, can you vote or not? Uh, I mean, we yeah, always stop. A lot of times is who's keeping attendance. Yeah, well, you know, and that's what that, I mean. There's, is that in front of us at the time? Steve yeah. Ray. Steve Ray keeping attendance. Well, in any case, um, or or the biggie would be for votes. There's there's a limit to what can be voted on online. So that that would be. I, I mean, I think you you can't do it. Adopt a budget. You can't right. make a reduction in personnel. You yeah. can't. A lot of those things we don't do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But the list is all inclusive for a lot of words. But the APC does. The APC does. That's that's why it's in state code. It's it. just good thought. I think yeah, we could for now. You got the uh, code number. I see you say code number. It what? is I I see five dash fourteen dash one point five to three point five. Okay, and that is uh, electronic participation in meetings. Yep. like to make a motion of inserting that IC code for electronic participation at meetings that we would uh, refer to that. I make a motion that we insert IC code for electronic participation meetings. All in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay. Let's do that. All right. Moving on to 771. 
about the AC, APC office shall poll members. It should really probably say area plan office to avoid any confusion. I'll write that in. Um, to determine a quorum count, if unattainable, if unavailable to attend a specific meeting, notify the APC office. Again, just AP office, no later than 2 p.m. the day of the meeting. When polled, if unable to attend, the member shall provide the secretary with a verbal or written reason for the attendance or absence. If a member commits to their attendance and later cannot attend, notify the AP office as soon as possible after 4 p.m. telephone and leave a message on the office answering machine to be checked prior to the meeting. Do we do that? Uh, for the most part, we just get called directly. I mean, we usually know coming in and, yeah. you know, if, if someone's, you know, Bill can't get on there somehow, we, you're usually letting us know. Okay. <laughs> the after 4 p.m. telephone and leave a message. We don't. If we don't do that, we should strike that. Yeah, we generally find out tomorrow. Coming in. Okay. All right. Anyway, it said to remove the following. During member roll call, the reason for a member's absence will be announced by the secretary and the plan commission will vote to excuse. We don't do that. Are you, is that trying to shame the person? Yeah, I think that's I, I kind of wondered about, about that myself. Why that was in there to begin with. It won't work on me. No, I don't I think that's the same thing. Anyway. But it sounds like a shame. Um, that, that's what the committee recommended removing since we don't do it anyway. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Then another thing is in the area-wide zoning ordinance, the director does have the authority granted by the BZA to approve minor variances. This is 153.095 through 153.105, zoning 157, it says. Um, this came up in discussion with an attorney and he advised, do not do that. You are putting one person in a position to grant a variance. That is asking for trouble. If someone does not like that decision later on, uh, he says, the reason for a variance is if it's very small and they have to come pay a fee and come before the board, they may decide to just work within the code. He said, that's your job. You're the board. There's a, a majority requirement. That's a decision made by a board. If they want a variance, and if it's that important to them, they should come to the board and get a board decision. Putting one person in that position, your administrator, is not a wise decision. He says, don't do it. Uh, that was a lawyer saying that? Yeah, that was uh, attorney Pat S. Back in my in Fort Wayne. Now, the committee put that forth as something to change. And uh, depending on the size of the setback or the variance, um, a large setback could make a larger variance. If, uh, if a setback from a solar field is 300 feet, an allowable variance is 30 feet, someone who has that next to him might find an issue with that, a 30-foot adjustment. Other things as well, when you're giving a variance for something that somebody has a particular issue with, even if it's a small variance, 
tenants are coming a few feet closer to their property line, you never know. Somebody might take an issue with it. And that's what the board is here to do. And when you have a fee and you make them come in here, if it's a little variance that they're asking for, they may decide, I'll just build within code rather than go through that. Or if it means much to them, make them come in and do it. Is there any discussion on that? Yeah, I, I think what, what you'll have there, and I'll, I'll go back and double check it, but I think that is actually the minor variance is part of Indiana Code. I and, don't think it is. And for the, the hearing, they call it a hearing officer, which we do too. Uh, but I'll, I'll go back and, and look. Uh, the other thing is, this is, as you're aware, this is something that you guys you guys would basically send a recommendation to the area plan. Right. The area plan would have to send a recommendation to the commission. So. Mm -hmm. You don't like that sun, do you? I gotta stay at that. <clears throat> I know we talked, it seemed like 12, 13 years ago that we would give the director, if it was a small 10%, 15%, just do it. I, I don't know, you remember that, Lois? Yeah. We mm -hmm. said, Ten, don't bring nothing to a 10 or 15. That was our choice. Just to prove it in the yeah, office. Yeah, just to prove it. So maybe we were way out of line there too. But I can remember us saying that. Mm -hmm. And it could have been 15 years ago, it could have been last year, I don't know. It's just. We, we did give yeah we did give it okay if questions come up later why did that happen how do you justify it yeah. didn't well, work one man decided yeah mm -hmm. well he doesn't like me yeah well i know we the director went against us a couple of times we said, wait a minute, we said no, and you went ahead? So that's happened too. Right. And that was a big one. That was a big one. Oh, yeah. But he's no longer here. He's not employed here. Yeah, and he's not so, And you open yourself up to that kind of yeah, yeah. conflict later. Yep. So it's if, if we look, 36-7-4-916 is for minor variances. I'm going to bet it says that, that the hearing officer is allowed the 10%. And this is just basically saying, I'm the hearing officer, but then it comes down and says, uh, the hearing officer who, who may be a board member, staff member, or any other person. This is this is our ordinance to a T. It, does, it, does it's, say it's a, it says it's me, and then and if you go down up. four lines, it's yeah. someone else. That's, your, yeah, that's, that's our area-wide zoning ordinance. Yeah, but, right. but- That's not state code. But, I see 36-7-4-916 is for minor variances. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought we mm -hmm. discussed that a long time. I, I think that's, again, I'll, I will look, but I, I believe that's because it talked hearing officers see 36-7-4-923. I, I believe that is in code. So what's the frequency of this occurring? Rare. If ever, just, know, you encourage them to come here, though. Yeah, yeah. You I, 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 look, I look at this more as as they need ten foot and they've got nine. Do I need to bring them here for a foot? That's how I look at it. I don't look at it like you're talking. Thinking if it's something like that, that's going to be a larger thing. I mean, this this is. Do I want to waste your guys' time for? I need an extra foot this way, then I've got a farm field. That's where I would say a foot, and we're not even sure where the property line is because GIS isn't correct unless we have it surveyed. Is a foot going to make a difference? Tell you what, go ahead and let's let's do it. Yeah. Well, what I, about the opposition person thing? Yeah. We got that well, one foot. He said. He said yeah. I'm saying here down the road. But they, we don't really people fight over. 
property lines in half on the conveyor belt right now, you know? So don't just, don't open yourself up to more trouble. Yeah, I don't know why. That person, if they have to go for a variance, may decide, oh, I'll just build within code. In a lot of cases, and if they come before it, we know they need it. Or want it, at least. So we want to strike that 10% out then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're saying. Get yeah. rid of it. Yeah. It's got to come to this. Pull that line out. Mm -hmm. Either build within code or seek a variance. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll give Just know we had that 10% long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. People are getting more pickier. Oh, yeah. So with the gravel I have. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, I agree. But we never had no trouble. But that's fortunate. I like that to continue. Yeah, okay. I agree with you. Can we do we need to make that an option or I think we need to make that a motion. Okay, then make it a motion. You, can you read it for us? So Okay, we would strike the line that says the director does have the authority granted by the BZA to approve minor variances. That's that's what I see here in the uh, area-wide zoning ordinance. Now, additional language that you're looking at should probably also be removed. So make sure that I'm probably we're saying which one the, the, the hearing officer cannot make a 10 percent that we have to bring it here mm -hmm. yeah or mm -hmm. stay in code yeah okay variances cannot be granted by right. the office all right but only by the board all right you want to make that motion i want to make that a motion mm -hmm. i want to sit <laughs> okay would you give us a roll call vote please brendan are you 153.104 is that where you're at well, I was looking at text amendment to area-wide zoning ordinance for BZA. 153 above it is uh, County Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. And uh, oh. well, I'm, I'm in the actual ordinance. Are you on my worksheet? Is this, uh, yeah, this looks like uh, yeah, recommended text amendment to area wide zoning ordinance. It's on the page right before that. So those yeah, so those are those are the things that we're gonna go in front of the APC for approval. Okay, and then this this was somewhere this was on the next on the page right before it. later in there. Brenda, would you give us a roll call vote? Atkins? Yes. Al? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay. I believe that concludes our work on the rules of procedure. Well done. Uh, yeah. Good job. Uh, he said he couldn't make it. This is his Fairmount Town Board night. Yeah. So we, we call it special meetings, so Gary had obligations. Okay. Now. How many meetings have you here? <laughs>
Mizzy he wants, he's temporary. Ryan, Ryan, are you going to uh, put all of our new adopted procedures? Uh, in Paper. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, I've got about ten different. <laughs> yeah, well, I will. Changed it and did different things. So I, I will get it and get it put together. And then yeah. Okay. Then we'll get another thing like this. Yeah. Before I go to the APC on okay. it to bring it to you guys, okay. uh, but some of the things that we change in the rules of procedure may change the area wide ordinance, okay. which has to go through them. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So. Uh, yeah. Let us know when that. Packet is fully done. We'll review it one last time. And then it can go to the APC. Okay. Um, is there anything else? Okay. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you for staying on until 744. Well, John, I thought we only had like two pages. <laughs> 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 <laughs>